Hi guys, how's it going? This is Bag Collector from the Stock Lock team. Today we're going to go over stop losses and why you need them. All right, so let's begin with what is a stop loss? A stop loss is an order type called stop. Here is where you're going to set the exact price at which you wish to exit a trade should the price of the stock match that value. So what does that mean? When you enter a trade, you're going to set a point where if the price goes past that point, the trade will close for a loss. This is done so that we can protect ourselves from extensive losses, right? So this is the purpose of a stop loss. It will keep you from losing more than you're willing to lose. Essentially, what you're willing to lose is known as your risk unit. Now, where do we place our stop loss? Well, that really depends on the pattern or the formation or the strategy that you're using. Uh, whether that is on the one minute time frame, two minute time frame, five, 15, 30, 60, whatever your pattern is that you follow, and there are a variety of strategies in the stock market that you can use to make money and trade price action, based on this pattern, you will know where to set your stop. When the price passes this level, Eight times out of 10, it means that there's a good reason for that, and you probably shouldn't be in the trade anymore. Scenario A, say that you're going long. You've bought a stock, and now you want to set your stop. Our stop's going to be set below our entry at a level that, again, it depends on the strategy or the pattern that's being traded. And once the price passes this level, the trade's closed. So take AMD, for example. We're buying it above this level see where the arrow is pointing we are going long our stop loss could be the low there the bottom and the low of day in this scenario and that would be our stop loss so if the price passed below this level we'd be out of the trade with a loss scenario b we're going short which means we are betting against the stock and as the price drops we are gaining a profit our stop's going to be set above our entry, again, at a level dependent on the strategy being traded. Here we see that we're shorting below this level, and we have a stop that is displayed above with the arrow. Now, in regards to setting strategic stops, sometimes what we can do is we look at the chart and we can see that right next to the stop level that is based on our strategy, we might have another key point that we can use as our stop just to be safe because sometimes market makers they knock us out and they hit our stops so we gain a little bit of an advantage in some scenarios by placing our stop a little bit above our actual stop level based on the pattern now why does it matter why is a stop loss important do i really need one well Captain obvious, right? Here are the obvious things. You will lose more money than you planned on losing if you don't have a stop loss. Now, why is that? Because, well, we are not perfect beings. We are human beings. And so if a trade doesn't work out and we don't have a stop loss, it's only natural that we're going to start thinking, well, gee, maybe I should hold on to this trade a little bit longer and it might come back. That is the psychology of a human being, which is one of the challenges in trading, right? Sometimes that's more overpowering than the logic and the technicals and the realities and facts that we can see in front of us. You do not want to lose more money than you planned on losing because, well, generally as human beings, we're not going to hold on to our winners all that much, which 90 or so percent of traders do not. So you are going to have larger losses than wins. And this is a big problem for a day trader who is trading a sample size based on statistics and is looking to be consistent. Opportunity cost is, well, your capital's tied up in a bleeding position. And you're missing out on other trades that could be working out incredibly well for one or two or three R. And you are stuck in a trade because you've put a ring on that setup, on that trade, and you are married to it. This is not somewhere you want to be as a trader. We want to cut our losers quickly and let our winners run. Now, of course, there's going to be some effect on our emotions. 
there's going to come a time that we don't respect our stop loss and it goes so far against us that we now cannot accept the loss and we do not cut the trade. And that ends up destroying, in some cases, weeks, in many cases, months of progress. Longevity. We want to be in this business for a long time, as long as possible. So ideally, we want to trade until we retire and maybe even continue to trade after retiring. And the only way to do this is to be consistent and make sure that we never face a cataclysmic, fatal situation in trading. We never want to blow our account. We never even want blowing our account to be an option. And the only way to achieve that is to use stop losses. Now, by using stop losses, you may accept some losses and you're going to have to stomach them. But at least if you're using a strategy that has high accuracy, you're always moving in the forward direction. Whereas if you're not using a stop loss, you will have times that sure, whilst the trade goes against you, it might come back and you're saved and maybe even make some money on a trade that you shouldn't have made money on. But it is not steady growth. It is not something that you can do and trade calmly, stress-free on a daily basis. To be successful in this business, we have to have confidence. We have to have conviction in our trades. And that means that we need to continue doing the same process over and over again with an advantage and an edge without giving back many profits. This is only achievable by using a stop loss. And that's going to be how you use uh, a stop is going to affect your consistency and, of course, your statistical advantage. Now, unlike other businesses, we don't have that many overhead costs. Our cost of doing business are the losses that we incur and also the commissions that we have with our broker. Now, if we minimize and we control our losses, essentially what we're doing as a business is controlling our costs. And that is incredibly important in any business. How can we think of stop losses and how can we get past that difficulty of letting go of a trade that's not working? Well, think of an example. Think that you own a mini market and you have hired someone to manage your cash register. Now you notice from the video footage, the security footage in your business, that this cashier is pocketing your money and stealing a good amount every day. Now you've discovered this and you've decided not to fire them. The first thing anybody would do would be to confront this employee and to most likely fire them to protect your business from bleeding money. In a trading, in the trading world, if you do not cut a loss, that's like accepting that this employee is going to continue to steal from you and you're going to allow this to happen because you are too proud and stubborn to accept that they are not in a good employee and that you have hired them and that perhaps you've made a mistake in hiring this person. That makes zero sense. There's no logic to it. So cut your losses when they are identified. Put your hand in the fire and you'll get an ice cream. So what do I mean by this? By not using a stop loss, you are essentially teaching yourself bad habits and bad behaviors. Now, why do you do this? Because there are some times that you don't respect your stop loss. You stay in the trade and then it starts to work out. Now, one thing that is very true that I know is that the market will reward you for stupidity. And so sometimes you'll put your hand in the fire and you'll receive an ice cream. Now, what do you think will happen if you continue to put your hand in the fire, hoping that you get an ice cream? You might only get ice cream two out of 10 times. The other eight times your hand is burning and there will come a point that you no longer have a hand to try and get that ice cream. So make sure that you use your stop. The market will turn around sometimes in your favor but more times than not, and more than enough times, it will happen, and eventually you will be completely burned. Now, getting stopped out several times is good. I'm not trolling. 
Now, what I mean is that by getting stopped out several times, that's the market telling you that something's wrong in your approach. There's something wrong with the strategy that you're applying. Now, Thomas Edison said that I have not failed 700 times. I have succeeded in proving that those 700 ways will not work. When I have eliminated the ways that will not work, I will find the way that will work. This is exactly true in trading. If you do not respect your stop and accept the trade that has not worked, you will never learn from the losing trades. You will never seek to gain a better accuracy. You will stay to being complacent and lazy and experiencing several losses and a roller coaster of emotions. So it's important to get stopped so that we know and can receive the signal that something's wrong. We have to work on our strategy more. Now, your discretion is advised. What you're going to see now is going to hurt. It's uh, the destruction of, well, your goals, your dreams, your psychology, money, and time. So get ready for what is to follow. Phase one, the initial trade. Now you had a plan and you intended to respect it, but uh, things didn't quite go as you expected. So in this case, we're going to buy above this level and we're going to set our stop right there. Phase two, the beginning of the end. Now Richard Branson's going to space and so we're going to the moon with this stock. So we entered long, our stop was set, the price came across our stop loss and we are still in. We are hoping that, you know, this is just knocking out the weak hands and we're not going to respect the stop of the strategy that we've tested a million times. We're going to let this one play out. Phase three, the adjustment of expectations. Okay, forget the moon. I'll just take break even. Let me just get out in one piece. Doesn't happen. It never comes back. All right, well, this isn't working, so... I'll just wait for it to go to break even. Now, phase four, the, the, the decision you'll forever regret. Adding to the loser. Now, we've all been there and we know that usually this doesn't play out so well. Here's an example of adding. And now that it's dropped so much, we decided to add in. If we get a better average, then we'll be able to have a good chance of getting out at break even. All right, so I have a new average now. It's got to come back. Phase five, coming to terms with reality. You frozen. You're like a deer stuck in headlights and you don't know what to do. You're overwhelmed and overcome by this situation that we're in. It just keeps dropping and never comes back. Phase six, game over. Your account is blown. At this point, you're saying, I quit trading. I hate trading. I hate myself. I'm stupid. This isn't for me. My account is blown for the last time. Now, you see that this is an entire market day here in this example, and the price never came back. So when you feel tempted to think that, well, the price, it'll come back. I made a mistake, but I'll get out of break even. Just know that you are playing with fire. Your hand is in flames. Now recap, protect your business. The stop loss will ensure that you have another day to trade and it is so important to always have another day in, with your business being open. Not using a stop loss, you're risking having your entire business shut down and lost. Protect your psychology. You don't wanna end up cursing yourself out and putting yourself down and feeling like crap at the end of the day because you didn't respect your stop loss. And seeing that if you had just respected it, you would have been able to take three, four, five different trades. And they were all winners, but you were stuck on that one loser. That's going to affect the progress of the following day. Remember, nothing ever has to come back. Remember the example we just went through. Learn from your mistakes. Just because you're stopped out, it doesn't mean you're always going to be getting stopped out. 
again, getting stopped is a signal that something's maybe not right or just it was a bad day, just bad luck. Um, but it allows you to evaluate and go over your trades and learn if something's going wrong. By not respecting your stop loss, you're allowing yourself to have subpar strategies, subpar setups, and you'll likely never achieve that long-term consistent growth. Now, by rewarding that bad behavior, you're keeping a delusion alive that your strategy is great and it's amazing. However, if you had only allowed your stops to play out, you would see that perhaps seven out of 10 trades that you're doing are losers. And maybe it's good to find the right education, spend more time going over charts and back testing, and just doing the work that you need to do so that you can be happy, most of all, and be green. Respect your stop loss, guys. This is Bags from the Stock Lock Trading Team enjoyed this video.